So here's our first example. We're going to take a very simple situation and work our way up. So here's a ball. We're going to drop it from 10 meters above the ground. And as I and as we'll see later in the course, a falling object undergoes a constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. We'll discuss this in more detail later. We'll get into the physics of free fall at length. That's not the point of this. The point of this is to show you how to run the mechanics of the simulation in this very simple example of constant acceleration. Our question is, how far above the ground is the ball 0.02 seconds later? So we're dealing with very small amounts of time, so our assumption that things are constant will be true. All right, so let's think about how to work through the simulation. So what we're gonna do when we run a simulation is we're gonna set up a table. This time we're gonna do the table by hand, but our ultimate goal is to get a computer program like Google Spreadsheets or Microsoft Excel to do the t fill the table for us. So what we're gonna put in our table is a time, our position, our velocity, and our acceleration. Okay? And then we're going to start with the beginning. The beginning, that's define t equals zero. We just choose that. That's when we start our stopwatch. Where is the ball? Well, read the problem. The ball is 10 meters above the ground. So we'll put the position at 10 meters. What's the velocity at t equals zero? Well, we're dropping it. And if I just drop something, its initial velocity is zero. I'm just letting it go. And what's the acceleration? Well, I've told you that the acceleration is a constant 9.8. So 9.8 meters per second squared. And I'm also going to tell you it's negative. Again, don't get too engrossed in the physics right now. We'll talk about why it's a negative and a positive much later. At the moment, I just want to go through the mechanics. So the mechanics are you first establish what's going on at t equals zero. t equals zero, what's happening? You fill that in as best you can. Then you're going to go some small amount of time later. So I want to go a small amount of time. So let's go to this time. We're not going all the way to the end. We're going a small step. So we're going to take this 0.2 seconds and break it up into two small steps of 0.01 seconds each. Remember, this whole idea is predicated on the assumption that velocity and acceleration aren't changing very much over the time. And the only way that can be true is if the time is small. So we're going to take small time steps, hundredth of a second. So now you're moving on to your first time step, which we will often write as t goes to t plus delta t. And our delta t here is zero one seconds. That's the size of our step. Now what do we know at this time? To make things a little bit clearer, we'll switch colors. Well, we know the acceleration because I told you the acceleration is constant. So we can just go ahead and fill that thing in. Now what, do we, what about the velocity and the position? Well, go back to our discussion for the basis of this. We saw that if we can assume that the average velocity is just equal to the velocity, i.e. the velocity is constant, then you can say x final is x initial plus v delta t 
And similarly, if you can say that the average acceleration is equal to the acceleration, then you can say the final is V initial plus A delta T. And these are the expressions I'm going to use to fill in these two slots. So I'm going to start with the velocity, because I feel like it. So to solve for the velocity final, I go with my velocity initial, which is this quantity here. So that's zero. And then I add my A, which I told you is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then I multiply by my delta T, which is 0.01 seconds, which gives me a VF of negative 0 0.098. So now it's small, but it's not zero. The velocity changed because we had an acceleration. Acceleration is a changing velocity. We have an acceleration, thus the velocity will change from zero. Okay, now let's talk about solving for the position, which will go in this slot using this expression. All right, so I'm going to use xf is xi plus v delta t. Well, xi is 10. Now, the velocity. We chose to do velocity before position. There wasn't any rhyme or reason. We could have done position first. We just chose at random to do velocity first. So we can't make decisions based upon that. So which velocity do I use? I use this one. That's the velocity I'm going to use. What's the real velocity? Somewhere between that and this. Almost certainly somewhere in between. But remember the premise of simulation, that the velocity is equal to the average. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use 0. And so xf is going to be 10 meters. Okay, well we're still not done, because we're interested in going to 0 0.02 seconds. So we're gonna go another time step. What's the acceleration? Well, that's easy enough. It's just constant. Now we're gonna solve for velocity again. We're just repeating the procedure. So now we're going to solve for velocity. So now we're solving at 0 0.02 VF. Now I have a VI. This quantity, minus 0 0.098 plus Now we plug that into our calculators and we get negative 0 0.196 meters per second. So that's what we put in here. Now we proceed and do position. Same thing. XF xi plus v delta t. xi is still 10. So in our simulation, 
our ball hasn't moved yet. So we're going to have 10 meters. Remember, we're going to use this velocity. So I'm going to use that velocity. And then that time. And I'm going to put that together into my calculator and get 9.99902 meters. And this would be the answer to our problem. Okay, not very interesting. The ball doesn't move very far in the short amount of time. We could have figured that out probably by intuition. The main point here is again the mechanics, but also doing a simulation, in my experience, helps students understand the ideas of velocity and acceleration a little bit more. You can see that a acceleration does not necessarily you can see that an acceleration does not result in a change in position immediately. It results in a change in velocity. And it's this velocity that causes the change in position. So here we have an acceleration. So velocity changes. But velocity is zero. So position doesn't change. How do you interpret this? Well, you could make a movie with each of these being a frame of your movie. At t equals zero, the ball is 10 meters. A hundredth of a second later, the ball is still essentially at 10 meters. It essentially doesn't move. Two one hundredths of a second later, the ball has fallen some tiny amount. And so you could build a little movie of the motion of the ball.